Hello, mortgage professionals. Welcome to today's Mortgage Coach Coaching Call. We are extremely excited to be here today to make sure you can get the absolute most out of your membership and really want to make sure that you're at the best weekly sales meeting in the mortgage industry. My name is Anthony Savala. I'm partner success coach here at Mortgage Coach. I'll be hosting this call today, and I can tell you right now I'm extremely excited about who our special guest is going to be. Dan Keller is an industry leader. You are definitely going to have some huge takeaways that you can use in your business today. So get ready. Grab a notepad. If you're taking notes, be ready to, to really get some quality information. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we bring Dan into the call. I want to remind everybody that this Thursday we have another event. Uh, this Thursday, January 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be the Darren Hardy event, uh, the editor of Success Magazine. So if you haven't registered for that, uh, please do so. We'll be dropping in the chat box towards the, end, the link to the event in the chat box towards the end of the call. Uh, so again, if you have any questions about that or if you registered and you're not quite sure uh, where that link is, you can let us know. Email support at mortgagecoach.com or you can visit our Facebook page. Uh, there's great information there as well. Okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? As many of you know, you took this time to join this session. It's part of your busy work week. Well, today is all, all about leveraging mobile, video, social media with home buyers and realtors. So if these are parts of your business that you're just starting to use, if you're not really sure how you can leverage mobile, you're going to learn that today. So a couple things before we bring in Dan, just wanted to ask our members here, how many, we're going to run a poll right now, have you downloaded the Mortgage Coach Edge app? So, Jacob, if you could push that poll for us, we just want to know, uh, have you downloaded the app? Um, and if you haven't, you know, we definitely understand that maybe it's, it's just something you want to do, you haven't done it, but it doesn't take very long at all. So once you do it, guys, just get it done. Um, you're going to really like some of the things you learn and how you can use that Edge app with your business today. So it looks about almost a little bit over 50% voted, want to get to about 75%. So if you guys just keep voting, great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Really excited. Uh, many of you have downloaded the apps. This is great. Excellent. Okay, and again, as we go through this call, please type in your questions into the chat box. If you're new to GoToMeeting or if you're not really sure what the GoToWebinar control panel, it's usually found on the right-hand side of your screen. So just go ahead and type in questions. If we can't get to every question during the call, of course, We'll follow up with you to make sure those questions are answered. Uh, but again, if it's related to Mortgage Coach or it's a technical question, remember we've got a great support staff, support at mortgagecoach.com. With all those technical questions, we're happy to help you out. Okay, so remember, as far as downloading the app, I think many of you know this already, but you just go to the Google Play Store on Android or you go to the App Store on in, in Apple Store. Uh, very easy to do. I'm going to walk through a couple things later on in the call if you don't have the app or your clients don't have the app, and I'm sure Dan's going to talk to that about how to get the app installed for somebody. But again, it's very easy. Um, it's not difficult at all, and you want to feel comfortable with the process of getting the app installed, whether it's for you or whether it's for a client, whether it's for a realtor partner. You want to get that process nailed down so you can do it right over the phone. Uh, you can type it out in email, so it's very easy for someone to understand. Okay. Uh, also, if you'd like to follow along with a, a mobile presentation to give you an idea how you can use some of these strategies, as Dan's going to be covering a lot of great stuff today, uh, you can also visit mortgagecoach.com slash cost. Give you a cost of waiting presentation that you can view on your mobile device. Uh, it's a great presentation. gives you some uh, nuggets on how you can use it with your clients and partners. Take advantage of that. Again, it's mortgagecoach.com slash cost. We made that uh, customized link for you so you can make it very easy uh, to get to. All right. So with that said, I'm going to bring in one of you know uh, the best industry leaders I've heard speak in a, a long time. Um, his name is Dan Keller. He's a heavy producer out of the Northwest. He's on Twitter. He's on Facebook. He's got a huge Internet presence. And what I really like about Dan is that he does things the right way. What I mean by that is he cares about his clients. And he's, much, he's about much more than just rate and payment. So with that said, Dan, welcome to the call. Hey, what's up, Anthony? Thanks for having me today, man. Absolutely. So, Dan, you know, as, as far as everything that you're going to be covering today, I know, you know, obviously you've been in the industry for a very long time. Your feedback that we heard at, from Sales Master is everybody thought you had one of the best presentations at that event. Um, and why? Because I think it's very relevant to today's marketplace. So 
you know, is there anything you'd like to say before we dive into the content? You know, about and I think one thing we should address first is a lot of people on this call may not feel comfortable with mobile and social media. So if there's one thing you could say, or maybe a couple things you could say about you know getting started with mobile and getting started with some of these techniques we're going to be covering, is there any piece of advice you'd give everybody before we get started? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it, it, my best piece of advice is get over it. I mean, it's here, it's here to stay. And it's going to be a major part of your business, and I'm not talking just social media. I'm I'm, I'm referring to mobile. I'm referring to it's like you know when the when the fax machine started going away and people started scanning and using email. I mean, it's just the way that we do business now. And I think um, moving forward, you don't have to be an expert. You just need to plan on using it. And uh, you know, the biggest thing I get, it, the biggest objection I get from realtors and other loan officers I talk to when it comes to the use of video, per se, is, well, I don't like the way that I look in video, and, uh, or I don't like the way I look on camera. And the funny thing is, that's how you look in real life. So when I say get over it, I say get over it politely, you know, and once you, once you get using it and get used to using it on a consistent basis, um, and, and you take a step out of your comfort zone, it becomes comfortable. Absolutely. That's a great point, Dan. You know, I tell a lot of our members, I've worked with hundreds of our members, you know, every month trying to get them to really understand the benefits of their, more, their membership. Uh, and getting out of your comfort zone, as we all know, that's where the magic happens. So when you push yourself, you, you get out of that comfort zone, that's you have those high-impact activities, you see those uh, you know, benefits of what you're trying to do, that ROI comes through. So uh, awesome. I'm really excited about this. So Dan, we're going to go ahead and, and transfer the controls over to you so you could go ahead and share your screen. Uh, so look out for that. We're going to be doing that right now. Okay. And then we can dive right into it. Okay, Anthony, you got my screen? There we go. Yep, we're up. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do, there's going to be a lot of questions, and there's going to be questions that come up after the call. So what I've done is if you go to Facebook.com, or we'll just write this down, Facebook.com forward slash Dan Keller MTG, um, that's my business page. And if you want, just post a question for today and tomorrow. I've got my web guy, uh, my website guy that I refer um, he's also a guy that I refer for social media coaching and training, Pat Flynn. And um, Pat is, I've given him admin rights to go in and answer any questions you have on social media, video, video marketing, website design. So um, definitely you can ask me or Pat a question over here. And all you got to do is just put it right here. Just post it on the page and Pat or myself will get back to you, okay? So that's the first thing. And then let me go ahead and open up... Uh, Open up my slides and we'll get going. So, uh, a lot of you guys heard me at um, whether you heard me at Sales Mastery or on the last mortgage coach call that I was on. So, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time um, kind of introducing myself. Uh, my bio is on my website, but I do want to let you guys know the sake this for the for the sake of the introduction. You know what? In 2008, I had no idea about technology. I was not computer savvy. I was not tech savvy. I was a professional strength and conditioning coach. And um, I guess you could say I was a jock. And so in, in, in my, my point in saying that is in such a, since 2010 when I really started getting into social media, internet marketing, it's only been about three, four years. So if a guy like me can, can come to the point of where I'm at in regards to internet marketing and social media and being able to monetize it the way I do, I really believe that anybody can do it. And so I'm not going to share with you any get rich quick tips or techniques. I simply, out of respect for what Dave has asked me to do and Todd Duncan asked me to do at Sales Mastery, I'm just going to be transparent and share some of the things that I'm doing in my business that are working for me um, as a mortgage professional. So um, I want to backtrack actually. Uh, one thing I want you, if you haven't listened to The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale, it's a 35-minute listen. Just Google it on, uh, on YouTube, and, or Google it or look it up on YouTube, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And that made a huge impact in my life in 2008. And I'll share some other things uh, 
in today's market that are relevant. But, you know, I heard Zig Ziglar say this a long time ago, and it was a quote by Eric Hoffer. And Eric Hoffer said, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped to, to deal with a world that no longer exists. And as you can see, these two pieces of technology really do not exist anymore. I really love the fact that on the, the, the Polaroid camera, it's one step, one step to nowhere. I printed out a picture and you're done with it. You really couldn't do anything with it. And so, you know, what I'm asking today is, is it, you know, be open-minded. And, you know, Anthony was saying earlier, um, if there was any advice that I have for loan officers or realtors that are struggling with using technology, embrace it. It's here. It's the future of our business, and uh, and uh, get used to it. So you know, another thing in re in talking about social media too, you're finding that uh, you'll find that Zig Ziglar and some of these guys like Jim Rohn, these guys that have been around a long time, a, a, a long way before social media was even um, you, you know commonplace. Um, some of the fundamentals that they talk about are the same. 30 years ago, and they're the same with social media. And if you go out in life looking for a friend, like Zig says, you're going to find they'll be scarce. But if you go out in life to be a friend, you'll find them everywhere. And I think, as I shared at Sales Mastery, that is the definition of social media, in my opinion. And the next few slides are, are going to basically support that. You know, Stephen R. Covey says, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. And again, I think that's huge. That's how I've had success on Twitter. Um, that's how I've had success on, on Facebook. And quite honestly, in life, you know, listen, especially with real estate agents and financial planners and, and insurance agents that I'm, that I'm meeting with on a weekly basis, I listen to their needs, and then I try to help them solve their problems. And it's that social media is almost a, uh, it's an unfair advantage. It's, it's almost cheating the system because everything's, out there and it's so easy via social media to find out how you can help uh, future business partners. So I want to share with you real quickly um, some of my connections and I'm not sharing you these numbers to impress you by any means but it's to impress upon you that it's not the number of followers. You know 700 Facebook followers, 1000 plus Twitter followers by no means are those great crazy numbers but you know, one of the ways I approach social media is that if you're connected to me, if we're friends on Facebook or if we follow each other and we're connected on Twitter, um, I want to bring value. I want to bring value to that relationship. I consider it an honor. And I think if you take that approach with social media versus trying to monetize or focus on the ROI, I think you're going to have a lot more success and it's going to be more enjoyable. You're going to enjoy being out there. Um, one, of the, one of the, I have to share this because a lot of people loan officers and real estate agents say, I'm not on Twitter because there's no way to make money on Twitter. Twitter is just, it's too fast, it's too quick. And I need to share the example of what Twitter has done in my life. So Twitter, I joined Twitter in 2010. And um, one of the few first people that I started following were real estate agents. I wanted to see if there were any real estate agents out there on Twitter that um, we could do business with. And what I found out that in Washington State, as techy as Washington State is in my area, very few real estate agents were on Twitter. And by the way, I got on Twitter and I got on Facebook for all the wrong reasons. I got on Twitter and Facebook for many of the reasons that loan officers and real estate agents get into social networks today, and that's to monetize it. That's to look for business. So initially, I got onto Twitter you know, looking to connect with real estate agents and to do business online, and that didn't pan out for me. There was no business. There were very few real estate agents on Twitter in that space at the time. But what I found is there was a couple of real estate agents all over the country, one particular in Wisconsin, Green Bay Greg, and who's a stud, by the way. And um, if you don't follow him, follow him. Give him a shout-out. And same thing with a guy up in Canada, Calgary, Canada, called, uh, named Kelly Scar. Both of these guys um, were on Twitter. They were sharing some of the things they were doing in business. And I just jumped into conversations with them. I followed them, uh, retweeted some of the things they were talking about, added value to some of the things they were doing. We ended up doing a um, Skype meeting. And um, since then, we've met up a few times online. I've met Kelly in real life at a conference down here. 
And but what those relationships have led to is, um, and I'll share another one, another real estate agent down in California that I connected with, and uh, again, just added value to his business, and that that led to a refinance referral up here in Seattle. But in connecting with these guys um, on Twitter, it led to Green Bay Greg in Wisconsin referred me to a real estate agent up here in the Northwest, and today in 2014, he is my number one referral partner. And what Kelly Scar, connecting with Kelly, has done is connected me to a network of real estate professionals all over the country, even down here in, in Washington State, with him being up in Calgary, that's opened up some doors to doing business with other real estate professionals as well. So, and it, it opened the door to doing business with my number two referral partner um, who came through through Twitter. So for the people that say that Twitter and Facebook can't be monetized, they can be if you take the right approach. I'm going to share that approach with you guys today. So this is just proof, these guys right here, that it works. If you haven't heard of Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk is a guy that you need to follow. Um, his Twitter handle is at Gary V. I would, he posts videos daily, YouTube videos, two minute clips, interviews that he's done with uh, Fortune 500 companies, small companies, but he just published a book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Gary Vaynerchuk's also the author of Crush It, which was one of the first books on social media back, I believe, in 2006, 2007. But moving forward to this book, Jab, 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 Right Hook essentially is written, it's a bunch of case studies around how to tell your story in a noisy social word, how, in world, how to sell using social media, but how to do it right. And essentially what jab, 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 right hook means is give, 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 then close. This book, like I said, is amazing because it's a, it's a book full of case studies of companies, celebrities, people doing it wrong, and how, and how they should do it right. So I want to give a couple of examples of social. Dave Savage asked me to share some examples of social, um, social selling, social media, and how I'm doing it in my business, and how some people are doing it wrong, and how some people are doing it right. So one of the things that I see all the time, one of the mistakes that I made when I was uh, starting out in social media was um, the fact that I could automate posts. Um, you can pay a company to tweet for you. You can pay a company to post for you. Don't do that. You wouldn't send somebody to a cocktail party. You wouldn't send somebody to a uh, social meetup on your behalf, um, expecting them to buy from that other person. So it's the same thing you're doing. It's not authentic, and it's actually making you look worse than you really are. I see a lot of loan officers doing that in today's market, where they will post stuff that's totally not relevant to their business, their life, and who they actually are, and you know that it's not, it's not them. <clears throat> the other thing that I did wrong early on was pitching or marketing me. I was using Twitter and Facebook just to pitch and promote me all the time. And you know what? People are smart. Today's consumer, uh, they're more intelligent than they were before. They have access to information quicker and more efficiently than they ever had before. And nobody wants to be sold. People like to go to social networks to be social. They want to go there and see you pitching a listing, pitching rates, pitching loan programs. But there is a way to do it right, and I'll share that with you here in a few minutes. Um, using rates as an incentive to buy, sell. Again, you're selling, and people know that. People see that, and then in, your, in their eyes, you're a salesperson, and that's what you're trying to leverage social media for. So instead, listen. Jump into conversations. Join conversations. Um, I look at Facebook. The people that I'm connected with on Facebook and Twitter, I look at them as my database. And so I keep in touch, I connect with them, I comment on their posts, I learn, I take notes um, when they post certain things that are relevant and um, reconnect with them regarding those items, those things that have occurred in their lives. And then the last thing is just self-promotion, promoting you. Promote others. So that's one of the things that, that I learned early on. When you promote others, others tend to promote you. So it's kind of the golden rule, uh, which Zig Ziglar said, uh, you know, as well. If you go out in life looking for friends, they're going to be scarce. Um, go out and be a friend. Go out and make other people, help other people succeed, and uh, your success will be a byproduct. So let's talk about a couple of right ways of, of doing social media, of using social media. Post about your life. People are curious about you. 
you know, what I'm finding out on social media right now up here in the Northwest, there's a lot of people in my sphere that I'm connected with that love, love, love the Seahawks. You know, I like the Seahawks. I don't love them, but I'm finding out there's a lot of people that, you know, when they lose, it ruins their day. When they win, they have better days. So, you know, post things about your life. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing is I, I love traveling with my family. I love fishing with my son. And, um, you know, so people get, people are more, in, more inclined to interact with you when they see you out on the boat, when they see you holding up uh, pictures of fish or going and doing day-to-day -day activities. They can relate to that. They can engage with that. Um, share stories, events about what you do. Um, what is your why? So people are going to figure out what your why is all about. And I'll get into that here in a minute, but that's huge. People can see what your passion is about and why you do what you do. Um, instead of just sharing rates, share rent versus zone, debt savings analysis, say, uh, share reports that you've put together, events that you're putting on, stuff like that. They can see through that that you're in that space, that you're adding value to people, and they're more inclined to share that. They're more inclined to ask questions. And then cut and paste reviews. When you get a review from Zill, you can share your, your Zill review on Facebook or your Yelp review on Facebook. Those are really good things to share. And uh, so tell your story. People will be interested. And then if your clients, what I do, one of the strategies that I've recently started doing is um, when a client um, gives me a review, I ask them to share it and tag me in it. And that always works, especially with real estate agents and then do the same for real estate agents. I want to share a real life. This just happened a month ago. And I always want to be relevant, and I want to be transparent, and I want to share uh, something that happened to me about a month ago where a guy earned my business, and he's absolutely doing it right. I know if you've been to Sales Mastery, you've heard of Cutco. They're the closing gift company, um, knives and cutlery for closing gifts, um, personalized closing gifts. and so. I got a Facebook message probably a month and a half ago from a guy named Isaac Stedman. He's uh, up here in the Northwest. And, you know, initially I get the message from him. He wanted to connect on Facebook. And obviously so I went to his about page, learned that he was with Cutco. And I just assumed it was a sales rep. I get sold. I get solicited on a daily basis, whether it's being recruited or, you know, companies like Cutco. And I've always had a unique closing gift that I give to my clients. So it's really hard for me to think in a different direction. And Isaac, through a series of jabs, which I call them, if you refer back to Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, through a series of jabs, through a series of Isaac just adding massive value to my life, he did some research, found out what I was up to, what made me tick, what made me work, what my why was, and through a series of jabs, I right hooked myself. And so that's how it's done. You know, there's a lot of loan officers on this call, and we are, uh, a lot of us go after real estate agents, enjoy working with real estate professionals, financial planners. And in my opinion, the way that Isaac, the approach Isaac took is the exact approach that I take with real estate professionals, the exact approach that I took with a financial planner just three weeks ago, and I'll share that example with you in a minute, to land him. And so... I highly encourage you to connect with this guy on Twitter. He's doing it right. He's doing social right. He comes from the approach of giving, and he absolutely, and I don't know if he just got done reading Jab, 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 Right Hook, but his approach to jabbing is 100% uh, is on the mark. So the strategy behind Jab, 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 Right Hook, the strategy behind what Isaac did is you add value. You add so much value that people are attracted to you. Tell your story about your why, why you do what you do, why you get up in the morning. And if you don't know your why, I believe you're selling the wrong product. So I'm going to encourage everybody on this call today, when you get off, to really dig deep and understand your why. What gets you out of bed every morning? It's not the money. What gets you out of bed? <clears throat> what, is a, what is a main reason why a top producing real estate agent would want to work with you? And so, you know, one of the things that I do is I use Mortgage Coach Edge, I use Rate Watch, and then I use my own content. I blog, I create my own content to share with followers. And through those three main sources, through social media, my followers, my friends, see my why. 
they see what I'm up to. Every book that I'm reading, um, I'll share those books with my friends, my followers. And they see exactly what I'm doing, that I'm uh, trying to improve myself on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. You know, a great example <clears throat> in regards to what is your why. Uh, when Kevin Durant was in Seattle with Sonics, um, we fell in love with him. And we, I'm still in love with this guy and his approach to life. Um, because of his why. One of the things I love about Kevin Durant is he's not flashy. He's not out there giving professional athletes a bad name and, and showing off all the time. What Kevin Durant's why is, is in, uh, I believe it was 2010, his AAU coach, his mentor, was murdered. He was 35, and since then he wears the number 35. When he does well, sinks a big shot, he points to the sky, and whether it's He's pointing to, you know, to, to the Lord. I believe he's pointing to the sky to his coach. His coach made a huge impact in his business. And so it, it's the same thing with your customers, with your realtors, with your friends. What you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you're saying. And that's exactly what Kevin's doing. He, he does it with his actions. He does it with his why. And that's a huge quote by, by Ralph Waldo Emerson as well in regards to social media and marketing online. See, social media isn't this crazy, complicated, new piece of technology. And kind of what Anthony and I were talking about at the beginning, social media is simply a strategy. Fundamentals don't change. Uh, the way we communicate can change the strategy. But social media is simply another way, another strategy to communicate your story, not necessarily your product. And that's my hope with, with social media, that you'll understand that. And my commitment to Dave uh, when I came on the call is to give some insider tips, strategies that I'm using. And I want you to write this down. If you have any questions on this, I certainly can help you on this. But if you go to your Facebook page and you look at your friends column right on the left-hand side, <clears throat> you're going to see that you can add groups. So, for example, I have 720 followers or excuse me friends on Facebook. I don't always post something to all 700 people. So for example, my friends that I went to college with, my clients don't want to see that I posted a link that I'm on a webinar talking about social media and marketing with Mortgage Coach. However, the 430 real estate agents and lenders that I'm connected with all over the country might. So what I've done, and this takes a little bit of time, uh, maybe 30 minutes, but what I've done is just like you manage your database, you put your database into ABC clients. What I've done on Facebook is I've made a group called Real Estate Agents. I've made a group called Real Estate Agents and Lenders, and those are friends, people that I'm friends with that are real estate agents, people that I'm friends with that are real estate agents and lenders. And when I have something real estate, mortgage, industry related regarding marketing, I will just send a Facebook post to that group. So my friends and my family members aren't seeing um, necessarily a post on marketing or a post that I really don't need them to see that's irrelevant to them. So that's another kind of an inside strategy, a tip, a bonus that I wanted to share with you guys. I think it's super important that you look at Facebook like this moving forward in 2014. Use it as a database management system. So what I, in moving forward with the presentation, social is just a part of the funnel, the sales funnel. And I shared this funnel at Sales Mastery, but my formula, my marketing formula is simple. I use this funnel. You have a potential customer. That customer could be a buyer. It could be a homeowner or it could be a realtor. And what you've got to do, the first part of the funnel, is you've got to bring awareness. The next step is the interest. They're interested. You've got to get them interested. The next is desire. And then the final part of the funnel is action. At the end of that funnel, you've got a customer. But what I've done is I've kind of edited this funnel, which I didn't create this. This funnel's been around for years. But when you add value at each one of those stages, your level of conversion goes through the roof. And that's one of the things that with, with social media, one of the things with internet marketing, when I meet somebody online, they're a cold lead. They know nothing about me. Uh, you know, We've got bullseyes on the, our front and our back coming out of this mortgage meltdown. So the more value you add through each one of these phases, the more likely you are to convert and convert at a higher rate and convert with referrals. 
So let me, I want to share with you guys, this is uh, part of the presentation that I shared at, at Mastery. With a, I'm going into um, detail a little bit more. But my online success formula is really simple. It starts with creating your brand. So you're going to see my face, that picture of me smiling everywhere. That's my brand. I use that on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, I change it up a little bit on my website. and my videos, you're going to see that a lot. So it's on my website. It's there. I created my brand. The next step is it's on all of my marketing material. If you haven't created a mortgage concierge packet for not only your buyers for purchases, your homeowners for refis, and your realtors as referral partners, I think you're missing out. That's one of the things that I do. Um, Michael Mayer, in his book, Seven Levels of Communication, um, refers to it as a um, spectrum of solutions. And I've done the same exact thing in my business, and it's big. I'll post my SlideShare present, uh, presentation that I hand out to realtors. I'll post it on my Facebook fan page so you can see that. But essentially, I send out, that out to realtor partners that I'm trying to set up meetings with so they can see how I operate my business and how I can add value to theirs. So I've created a mortgage concierge package. That goes out to home buyers. That details the home buying process. Again, you can go to my website and you can download that, mymortgageguydan.com forward slash apply, or just click on the Get Pre-Approved with Dan and it'll take you to that page. You can download that. It's a PDF, a document, and you can see exactly how I set that up. And then what I did in 2011 is I wrote a first-time home buyer manual. I also wrote one for USDA buyers. I also wrote one for FHA 203K loans. And this is big. When a realtor refers you or when a lead comes in online, when you send this out in addition to a Mortgage Coach Edge, Rent versus Own, or Mortgage Coach Edge presentation, it just adds so much value to that relationship, they're not going to go anywhere else. The great thing, too, about this is when you take a Mortgage Coach Edge presentation, a home buyer or refinance handbook, a video introduction, there's no reason why that customer is going to want to look somewhere else. You've built a relationship. They see it's you. You've added value. You're the expert. You've communicated in a way that nobody else uh, in the marketplace is doing, and um, you've just separated yourself from the pack. So uh, this is an example of how I approach refinances. In 2012, uh, late 2011, I went after HARP to refinances. Prior to 2012, I'd maybe closed a handful of refis in my career. And in 2012, as a result of using Mortgage Coach Edge Total Cost Analysis, uh, writing a HARP 2.0 ebook, and going door to door because I bought and purchased leads, um, I closed in excess of 80 HARP refinance transactions. So it's, it's a huge strategy, huge for conversion. So real quick to recap, so a review of the funnel, uh, you've got to create your brand, you've got to build your brand, you do that through some of those marketing pieces, um, through Twitter, through social media, through adding value to your sphere, through adding value to your real estate agents, you've got to create content. I have what's, what's called a 2Q rule in my office, if a customer asks, uh, if, if, if one or more customer asks the same question more than once, meaning if a customer asks a question and another customer asks the same question, uh, that's a two-question rule. I create a blog post or I create a video around that question. And so I think that's big. I think it's a, it, it, I shared this with real estate professionals. Um, they lack um, in regards to things to blog about, things to share with their customers, things to send out on um, their social networks. And I just go through, next time you do a listing presentation, write down the main questions that somebody asks. Next time you do a buyer's consultation, write down the main questions that a buyer asks and write about them. And then the final part of this is to syndicate. Syndicate means to send it out to your sphere. I saw this on Facebook a while ago and I had to take a screenshot. Steve Martin uh, said, be so good that they can't ignore you. And I think when you're dealing with internet leads, when you're dealing with realtor referral partners, when you're dealing with financial planners and customers, if you take that approach to creating content, to adding value, to using video, to using social, uh, direct mail, managing your database, when you take that approach, success is going to happen. When you're driving them back to a hub or a website or a fan page or a landing page where you've got 
your branding where you've got all your value packed into one or you've ran them down the funnel, success will happen. You will be so good, they'll want to work with you. So this is kind of my approach to using video and using all these different resources. I drive them all back to either my website or a landing page where there's a substantial amount of value. One of the things that I don't want um, anybody to get the impression that I'm talking about tech is the end all. Uh, a lot of times people want to hide behind tech. I see this with real estate agents that um, pay money for online leads. And um, one of the things that I've learned from Michael Mayer and 7L is the influential zone. Handwritten notes, power notes, phone calls, events, seminars, and one-on-one -on -one meetings, you guys, this is where the money is made. This is where the money is made. And so don't think that you can hide behind video. Don't think you can hide behind your social network, behind your computer, and, and go out and generate these leads and generate these referral relationships. You still need to use the handwritten notes. You still need to make the phone calls, and you've got to get one-on-one. -on -one. So in kind of wrapping this up, I want to give you an example of, uh, of how the funnel works and a real-life example. So for, for example, up here in the Northwest, we have a lot of areas that are USDA zero down eligible. So an example of how I've used this is I create a USDA blog post. I provide valuable information to first-time home buyers. Most of the buyers using the USDA loan are first-time buyers. Most of them have very little money. They may be credit challenged. And so I provide valuable information and answers to common questions that first-time home buyers would ask. Again, driving them down the funnel. I add more value than it's, than it's expected by inserting a video and then having an ebook. I don't ask them to opt in. I don't necessarily believe in opting in. I just give it to them. And um, so they click on it and they can save it to their, their desktop as a PDF or they can print it off. The next is I offer benefits and solutions in a call to action. I tell them what I want them to do next. What I want them to do next is to go see if they apply and see if, you know, what, what items they would need to apply or to get approved for a USDA loan. That is my application page. So there's a predictable action taken at the bottom of the funnel. So when they go and they um, contact me via the internet, this is what they get. This is an example email, and this is one that I think Sunday. I just sent out last Sunday. And the cool thing about this, this was Sunday at 4 o'clock. I believe there was a really good football game on TV at that time, and um, I think I was watching it too. This email I've created in advance. It's in my drafts. All I did was copy, paste, add the home buyer ebook, and send this out to the customer within um, a few hours. Because I told them to, he told them to go to this page. Within a few hours, he went to this page. He applied online with the secure online application. I got notified. He downloaded the Mortgage Concierge Packet, which is a PDF, and then below there's a series of four videos that he can watch um, in regards to the mortgage approval process. And then, this is an example of, he hasn't turned in all of his paperwork, so I'm going to give you a different example. Once they've applied, I use Mortgage Coach Edge to respond to that. And so this is another email. Dave and Anthony have asked me to post this, so I will take a screenshot of this and post it on the Mortgage Coach fan page today. But this is the email that I use to respond to buyers. And this works. This, it, this has worked for me. You know, there's a superstar loan officer in Iowa, Tim Lamb. Love the guy. Um, I would encourage you to connect with him because he's a stud. But um, this is kind of a combination of email that he uses and a combination of email that I've used prior to meeting Tim. And uh, it works great. So um, that's, that's the Mortgage Coach Edge presentation. What I do right now with my customers is I ask them to, I put a call in after I send this, and I ask them to download the Mortgage Coach app. So if they're on their mobile phone, they need the app to view it. I walk them right through it. It's a, it's a conversation I can have with them, too, to see what kind of phone they have. So I walk them through, have them download the app, and then what I do is I always CC. What you can see is I've CC'd the agent, and there's an initial, right after I send this email out, I call the agent on this. And I share with them too to download the Mortgage Coach app. And what the strategy that I use is if um, they download this Mortgage Coach app, they can always refer back to that email when they're out showing homes to really dial in on what the customer's budget was. 
they can have a conversation with the borrowers about the options that I put together in the loan summary. And so it's a really good opportunity to connect with the agent and then once I go under contract, I learned this from Tim Lamb, once we go under contract, I send that email, that report to the listing agent so the listing agent understands my customer's buying power, understands how far along we are in the process, and understands we've got our stuff together over here. So another one of the successes, uh, parts of the success formula in my business is iJot. I use iJot to communicate with all of my realtor partners, with all new realtor partners that I want to meet with, and with clients. I, um, I help a lot of real estate agents with internet leads, whether it be through Zerpol or Market Leader. And so I use iJot as kind of the icebreaker with a lead that knows nothing about me and nothing about the agent. So for example, this is an email that I sent to a realtor partner that I'm working on, I'm jabbing right now. Um, and so what I did, there's a couple of keys. The, key, the first key is in the title of the email. You want to title the email, video email from Dan Keller, and then real quick, two words, three words or less, what the email is about. So this one was inviting a realtor to my seven levels of communication coffee with Keller uh, page <clears throat> program. And so then the video you want to keep under three minutes. One minute is ideal. In this particular email, I knew the agent was looking for um, a couple of things in his business. And so um, I spoke of a couple of other items other than Coffee with Keller, so it's about three minutes. The really cool thing, too, about iJot is down below, it's going to tell the agent how long the video is. And if a, if a video says three minutes or less, the agent's more likely to watch the whole thing. And then the third thing is the follow-up call. Um, that's the biggest thing. Don't expect somebody to respond to a video that you send them via email. Follow up. And what I do in those videos is I ask open-ended questions to initiate a response. So that's kind of a strategy that I use, ijot, E-Y-E-J-O-T dot com, and it's free. We like free. So this email right here that I sent to this real estate agent, within an hour, this is the response I got. Dan, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Thought it would be a canned video, but no. Powerful approach. So does this work? Yes. This works. Does it work all the time? No. And the, again, the big thing is the follow-up. The fortune, Todd Duncan says, is the fortunes in the follow-up, and I 100% believe with that. Believe with that. Okay, so another takeaway, I want to share this with you, something that I do for my realtor partners. I don't send them rate sheets. I don't send them mortgage-related information. Um, what I will do, most of them I'm connected with on Facebook. When a guideline, like we just got hit with the QM stuff, when something like that happens, I'll write a blog post or I'll do a video, and then what I'll do is I will post it on Facebook and send it to them on Facebook in that group. And that usually works, or if it's really important, I will send it at the very last part of this email, um, of the Coffee with Keller email. But what I've done to stay in touch with my realtor partners is um, I created Coffee with Keller, and I read a book. Um, and I break down a single chapter once a week, and I send that out to my real estate agents. But that's how I started it. Then it kind of took off, and I had other, other real estate agents joining, so I created this page where I post this, and any real estate agent or lender can opt in and join the group. And so I think this is big. Um, it's a big way to send value out to your agents. I just finished reading The One Thing by Gary Keller. That's a big book in our industry right now. Right now I'm reading Michael Mayer's Seven Levels of Communication and reviewing that for my customers, or excuse me, for my realtors, and um, getting a fantastic and great response from that. You know, another thing, Seth Godin, um, if you haven't heard of him, subscribe to him, on, follow him on Twitter, subscribe to his blog. Um, Seth Godin said in The Purple Cow, <clears throat> the opposite of remarkable is very good. People think the opposite of remarkable is bad or very bad. The act actually, the opposite of remarkable is being very good. There's a lot of very good products, a lot of very good loan officers out there, but the remarkable ones get talked about, and in today's market, they go viral. So I want to wrap up real quick. Uh, we got about a few minutes, and I want to leave some time for, for Q&A. But what has this done, the impact of social, the impact of having a system online, what has it done for my business? Um, the big thing is it's given me a predictable lead source. I control the leads. I'm the gatekeeper. I don't rely on real estate agents. I don't rely on realtors' work ethic to support my family. And so it's allowed me to be the gatekeeper. I control the lead. 
And then it's allowed me to spend more time going out and partnering and adding value to real estate professionals that I want to work with. Higher quality leads, number two, higher quality, quality leads that I want to work with. I can pre-screen them um, a lot better than, <clears throat> than them just being a cold lead. Um, at, at the top of the funnel, if it doesn't look like it's going to work out, I can refer them to credit repair. I can get them off our desk so I can work on loans that have heartbeats. Um, it's a trust builder. You go, from, you go from commodity to advisor, and that's video. That's what video and that's what social does. And so um, it's been huge. Video has been a big thing. Mortgage Coach Edge, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on a Mortgage Coach call. Mortgage Coach Edge with video has been a business transforming product in my life. It's been one of the greatest things that I've been able to implement in my business. And uh, <clears throat> if you're not using video with Mortgage Coach Edge, I think you're leaving a lot of money out on the table and a lot of potential referrals on the table. Structure. Um, a predictable outcome. Like I said, people can either apply. I tell them in the blog post, I tell them online, you can apply or you can call or text me. That's it. And so I've got a predictable outcome. I've got more educated clients, less errors, cleaner approvals. And to be honest with you, I've got happier realtors because they know their clients are well informed. And then efficiency is less time on the phone answering questions. My assistant is less time um, where, my, where Kelly, my assistant, is answering questions that could be answered up front. A few minutes up front can save you hours on the back end. You know, and, this, and, and, and that the efficiency with time is great because now I can spend more time adding value to the life of my realtor partners and my financial planners and my uh, small business partners. And so one of the things that I firmly believe in, if you invest in yourself, you'll find that others will want to invest in you. <clears throat> and you simply cannot ask others to do what you haven't done for yourself. So invest in you. And so uh, Dave asked me to share this with you. What inspires Dan Keller? What have I done in 2013 and what am I doing in 2014 to learn and to grow? Um, it started with the Miracle Morning, which Isaac Stedman with Cutco introduced me to this. And this is a very, very valuable information. It's a short read. But in my opinion, if you could read a series of books in order, I would start with the Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Connect with him on Facebook. Connect with him on Twitter. Absolutely amazing story and amazing material. <clears throat> Darren Hardy's on the call, I believe, this week. Uh, I've heard him speak a few times. Uh, absolute stud. Brilliant, brilliant mind. The Compound Effect, one of the best books, uh, business books ever written. The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. I actually interviewed Jay last month, and I share that interview with you on the Coffee with Keller page if you want to see that. Michael Mayer's Seven Levels of Communication. I think it's one of the best books written for real estate professionals and mortgage loan officers. And then... Gary Vaynerchuk's Jab, 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 Right Hook. And if you haven't read Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, I encourage you to do so as well. You know, and, and what a huge opportunity. I'm pumped for the ninth, but um, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure all Mortgage Coach subscribers know that Darren Hardy is going to be here with this group on the ninth. I'm certainly going to invite as many realtor partners as I can to this call and uh, would definitely encourage you to do that as well. And then one last slide for you guys. Before you leave, I want to give you a bonus. Um, don't necessarily trust me. Um, what I would do is I would go to 811.com forward slash 2014 predictions. And there is, I think, 40 of the top social media tech experts in the, in the real estate uh, space um, were interviewed on this blog. And basically, they were interviewed in regards to what are their 2014 predictions. And what you're going to see is basically what I just spoke about. There you're going to see a transition to mobile, a massive transition to video, uh, less me, more you, so being more authentic and caring more, adding value. It's all about value, like I said, from the stage at Mastery a few months ago, and story selling, telling your story online, exactly what Gary Vaynerchuk's saying, and listening better. So I want you to have that resource. I'll also post that link probably tomorrow on the Mortgage Coach page so you guys can have that as well. So. Anthony, that's it, my friend. We, uh, we have a few minutes for Q&A. Wow. I can say, Dan, that was phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, you delivered. I, I mean, every slide was quality content. Me and myself, I've got over a page and a half of just huge takeaways. Uh, a couple I wanted to mention uh, to the crowd as, as we start you know, wrapping up here. But 
you know, you mentioned early on the call, you know, the idea of embracing the technology. You know, if you can embrace this and, and start owning it and own the responsibility to yourself to grow your business with these tools, I mean, it's going to pay, pay you huge um, ROI. But, you know, some of the other things I think were really, really good. You know, responsibility to the relationship. We're talking about social media, and, you know, Dan, you hit on this a couple times, but being authentic and being relevant. Uh, you know, and you're not just looking to monetize your networks. You're looking to provide them with value, and in turn, you know, that value is going to come back, you know, by promoting others and so forth. Um, you know, a couple other takeaways, you know, what is your why? That is huge. I hope everybody on this call knows what their why is and can identify that. Um, a couple other things I think are very important, tag testimonials. If you've got a, a client who absolutely loves what you do, a realtor partner, this goes for realtors on this call as well. If you've got a happy client, as great as it is for them to write you an email and tell, them, tell you how thankful they are, imagine if they go to Facebook and tag you, tag your page, tag you, and let everybody know how great you are. It is a huge game changer if you're not doing that now. A couple things I think everybody also needs to know is we are recording this. So if for any reason, and I'm sure many of you are going to want to walk, watch this again later on, but we are recording it. Uh, it's going to be on our website in the Coaching Call archive. You can also email support at mortgagecoach.com. Uh, it takes probably towards the end of the day, but we will have it ready for you if you need that link. Uh, a couple other things, Dan, I think you mentioned are great. The concierge packet, anybody who's not doing that, start doing that. Uh, we had a couple questions about that. As far as the concierge packets you put together, you know, how long are those? Are those really, really big, or, or are they pretty, uh, you know, to the point? How, what, what's consistent of your concierge packets? Yeah, I, I slimmed mine down a lot, but, um, you know, what I would, what I would, uh, I'm going to try and pull mine up real quick, but what I would recommend in a concierge packet is, what I've tried to do is, you know, number one thing that we get with customers that we don't know um, is rate. Rate and fees. What are your rates and fees? So I try to take the the objections and handle those up front. So what I like to do first, though, is I want that customer, that lead, um, that doesn't know anything about me, that was maybe just referred to, that hey, maybe that real estate agent just met that particular client at an open house. They don't even know if they want to do business with a realtor yet, and so but the realtor referred them to come and talk with me. And so, you know, what I've done is. In creating the mortgage concierge packet, we are plan we are mortgage planners. And I'm sorry, I pulled up the, the old one. I actually know, I work for Mortgage Advisory Group, but um, this is the mortgage timeline. So what I do, the first page is my mortgage timeline. It lets you know what to expect over the next 30 days. And this is kind of a great uh, great sheet that I use. So let's say that we need to do a quick close. I can let the customer and the realtor know that we're basically doing 30 days worth of activities in 15. So we're going to need you to be prompt. We're going to need you to respond and be quick and, and efficient with, with your responses. But right after that, Anthony, I share a lot of um, about who I am, what I do, one page, real quickly, um, what I do, how I view a mortgage. And then right after that, I share about um, you know, my team, who my team is, what my team does, um, what, uh, what our rules are and what to expect next. And then just kind of go into a few other things to do in the notes. But I would keep it under about 10 pages. You're more than welcome to swipe mine and um, just kind of recreate it if you want. Excellent, excellent, perfect. So hopefully everybody got that. Uh, you know, you also mentioned, Dan, you know, you're using Edge to do a video introduction. And I totally agree with you. If the members on this call haven't done one of those yet or started to do video introductions using Edge, it's, it's too easy not to. All you need to do is, you know, create an edge presentation, add a video, introduce yourself and what you do, add some, uh, you know, nuggets about yourself that you think would resonate with your clients. And then also, you mentioned the two-question rule, which for many loan originators on this call right now, you're trying to be more efficient with your time. You're answering the same questions over and over again. Imagine being able to create an edge video that answers a question that gets asked a lot. So when you get that via email or your realtor asks you that same question, you have a video resource using Edge that you could send to them, whether it's to their mobile device using the mobile strategy or you know, right to their desktop with an Edge presentation. That is a huge value. And again, at the end of the day, you're able to use your time more effectively uh, so you can be more you know, productive. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I, I'm, I think you, you know, have done a great job of, you mentioned the hub that you've created and how you drive 
those leads back to the hub for your lead capture, for the content you're providing. So that's great. So again, we are recording this. I, I'm sure everybody's going to want to watch this again because there's so much quality content you delivered. Uh, but I think one of the things I, I really liked about what you said is you're not just sending these videos out and then you're, you're not following up. Oftentimes I'll talk to a member who might have sent out an edge presentation once with one video. They didn't make a phone call before or after, and they were wondering why it didn't connect. Well, take the time to do that follow-up call. You've delivered a quality presentation. Follow up and see what they thought of it. Would you agree with that? Is that sort of your approach, Dan? Yeah, it's been one of my biggest mistakes. You know, initially when, I, when using mortgage, as a matter of fact, just two months ago, I lost two transactions, and I did it, I did it all right. I did video out the gate. I did the Mortgage Coach Edge presentation, um, and they were cold leads. They were cold leads from realtors, um, you know, obviously shopping the realtor, shopping me, earned their business, and then, you know, just dropped the ball in regards to follow-up. Got busy, got busy with the holidays, got busy with lead generation, and didn't make the phone calls like I, like I should have. And you know how it works. You, you know, so-and-so's brother is a loan officer. You know, the guy that I've worked out with and ran on the treadmill with the last three years uh, works at Chase Bank. And the next thing you know, in one month, I lost two deals because of a lack of a lack of follow-up and so we've really tightened that up in my office where we're following up I mean the phone call it's it's until they are in a hundred percent and under contract and moving forward rates lock I mean, we're following up like crazy so I would highly encourage the phone call follow-up don't hide behind email don't hide behind video is not the end-all it's just one part of the sales funnel excellent perfect I have a great question here coming through it says so do you use a Facebook page and a personal page? And when you're, you know, providing content, I'm assuming Dan that you use all, you build a page, and you do most of this from your page, and then you you keep your personal side completely separate. Yeah, so I split up my personal page, guys. So let, check this out. So right now, if if you're still seeing my screen, that's my business page. That's my mortgage. That's for mortgage uh, loan officers that follow me, that I meet at Mastery, that I meet up Mortgage Coach, and that's um, for Realtor Partners. And I share mortgage stuff, success stuff here. Um, I don't spend a lot of time over here. I'm going to be honest with you. I've got 720 plus people over on my my regular page, um, personal page that like me, follow me, know me, trust me. And so I break that one down. Um, if you go, like I said, can you still see my screen, Anthony? Yes. Yeah. yeah so good. if I go over to my main page. Uh, click on home and you can do this on yours go to friends and that's where you can categorize your friends which is really neat you can categorize them via um, you know your region and what I've done is I've categorized them with Seattle area people and then I've, I've categorized real estate agents so all my local real estate agents that I'm connected to and then I've, I've put another group of realtors and lenders so if we're friends on Facebook and you're a lender you're in that group you're not always, you're going to get, when I post on my main page, you're going to see that, but if I post to that group, that group only sees that post. My best friend that I went to college with who works for, uh, uh, who's an attorney, is not seeing that I'm, put, uh, that I'm uh, talking about a new loan program that's going to affect lenders and realtors or a, a, a change to our industry in regards to like QM that's going to affect lenders and realtors. He doesn't care. And so when you create groups like that, that post only goes out to that group. So I spend more time over here on my personal page than I do on a, on a business page or a fan page. Excellent. Perfect. Hopefully that answered the questions uh, for those of you wondering about that. Uh, believe me, there's plenty of resources also. If you've never created a fan page, I know you might think, oh, I've never done that. It is not very difficult at all. You can go to something like YouTube.com and watch mm -hmm. how to build a page. That's very easy. Um, if you're trying to build a page so you can share edge presentations, let us know. You can email support at mortgagecoach.com. Uh, we'd be happy to assist you with that because, again, there's a built-in share button on every edge presentation you create, so you can get those out there and take advantage of that. Uh, also, as we talk, you know, Dan, you, you have brought quality content throughout this entire call. Your jab, 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 right hook philosophy is huge. I hope everybody takes advantage of that. Um, another thing you mentioned as part of your slides, you know, the idea of being remarkable. So I hope that everybody on this call takes that approach as you've seen the success with Dan. also want to congratulate you, Dan. For everyone who doesn't know, Dan was named 
uh, one of the top 40 under 40 by Mortgage Professional Magazine again this year. I mean, that just speaks to the type of professional he is and, you know, how serious he is about his business. So, you know, congratulations to you. I'm going to take the screen back because I just want to wrap with a couple things to make sure everybody gets. I uh, wanted to run a poll. So, Jacob, if we could run a poll, I'd like to see um, how many of you plan to download the app with your realtor partners and get your realtor partners to use it. So if you could just go ahead as we wrap this call, let us know. If you're going to start using it with your realtors, if you haven't, you now have been empowered to start using it and take advantage of this. I can tell you every time I've been going to a lot of conferences, I've talked to a lot of agents who've never seen the app, and once we show it to them, they are blown away. We've had all the testimonials. You heard from Dan. Uh, I got one here as we start wrapping the call. You know, he had a, he's been a rent versus own to a realtor, completely freaked out that she was expecting flyers. So, you know, this is yeah. what we're talking about here. Dan, you know, uh, you know, we're just about short on time, but this is another quality example. Using a rent versus own edge presentation, sending it to, to your agent, getting this out there, differentiating yourself, and again, being an industry leader. I'm 95% of you are ready to start using this with your agents. That is huge, Dan. That speaks to the value you've provided today. I think many of the people that have taken the time to be on this call are, are, are now empowered in a way they, they weren't before. So I really, really thank you for that. Um, again, your, your presence on these calls is great. So thank you very much for being here. You got it, man. And then also, one, yeah, absolutely. And also, Darren Hardy, don't forget this Thursday, the 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so make sure if you don't have that link, we will, um, if Jacob, if you could drop that in the chat box before we lose everybody, um, if they need to register for that, they can. Otherwise, they can go to our Facebook page. And then, Dan, you said you're going to be sharing some things to our Facebook page. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to post a couple of things here today and tomorrow. Um, and there's a couple of, of additional strategies, like with the rent versus own, making a customized rent versus own um, presentation for a specific realtor that you're working with and so that they can send out to prospects or to leads. And so I'll send out the one, a couple of them that I'm uh, using in my business that are generating a great response. And then a couple of those other links I'll post on the site uh, today. And I'll actually, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll tweet those out here in the next hour, okay? Excellent. Perfect. So everybody, you heard that. Connect with Dan. You know, he's on Twitter. He's on Facebook. He's on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, make sure you, know, you, can, you can see what he's doing. He's willing to share with the community, obviously. He loves Mortgage Coach. And we want to make sure, again, everybody who's taking the time to be the best in the industry has the resources available to do that. So, again, thank you, Dan, for being here. You've done a phenomenal job. We've had a lot of great responses in the chat box. Everyone's very grateful for you being here. So with that said, thank you, Dan, and uh, thank you, Mortgage Coach members, for being on this call. We look forward to hearing about your success. Have a great week, and we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks, everyone.